thank you for being here today. I'm so thank you for to talk having to you me. About the show. And so my first question is, you were in this unique position where Young Sheldon, it wasn't even done airing before Georgie and Mandy's first marriage was picked up. Mm. Talk to me about what it was like to move on from that show to the next. Did it feel less of a goodbye, kind of shifting your focus from one show to the other without like having to have like a pause in between? Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, that was a conversation around set was, was um, you know, we got this new show coming and, and um, but ever since the new show started coming about, we didn't want to take away from the ending of Young Sheldon. You know, we've been working on this project and, you know, for seven years we were on Young Sheldon and we didn't want to just you know, short America by just getting rid of it and going to this new yeah. show. Um, so, you know, we took our time and finished filming that. And then just like anything, you get done with one thing and you kind of put your focus on something else. So, yeah. yeah. And so were there any challenges that came with playing Georgie on Young Sheldon versus this version on Georgie and Mandy's first marriage? There's not much time in between and, there's, you know, like there's not a big time gap, but right. it still feels like you kind of have to take on a different role now that you're like the lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. I think even at the end of Young Sheldon, um, you started seeing a little bit of Georgie maturing and realizing he's, you know, got a lot on his plate and he's going to have to mature and you know do all that but um yeah on this new show we're starting about three or four months after young sheldon ended and uh, so he's you know dealing with the loss of his father and he's got a baby on his hip and you know there's a lot of struggles with that but you know i'm, I'm happy to show the people how he deals with that he, do, he deals with it very well and speaking of how different is it filming the two shows because i know young sheldon was single camera mm -hmm. and then you have george and mandy where it's multi and there's like a live audience right. so what do you like better which was easier maybe to adjust to yeah i think uh... well i mean hell even going into young sheldon i didn't know what i was doing i didn't know what i was getting into <laughs> but um... yeah i mean i can give you the obvious of how young sheldon's a single cam and yeah. george and mandy's a multi cam um, but you know, every Tuesday night, we that's when we film, and that's our filming days, and that's when the audience come in. There's 180 people sitting there, you know, watching you do your yeah. job, and uh, but it, it's amazing to be able to have. Um, I now I can tell you, I think I like multicam better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to get the immediate feedback. You know, and you know, if a joke's not working, then they'll they'll rewrite it right there. Yeah. You know, if it's not working. But um, no, I, and I've used this before. Tuesday nights for us is like Friday night lights for a football mm -hmm. player. Mm -hmm. You know, you go out there and everything you've been working on that whole week, you get to finally showcase what you've been working on. It feels good when you hear all the laughter. It really yes. does. I spoke to Rachel and she talked about how it's like you get that immediate reaction to like a joke's not working or a joke is. So there's like not that pressure because you get to just rework it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And they, and they know nobody's perfect, you yeah. know? So if you mess up, you just go back and do it again, you know? And, and the thing is, is the audience loves when there's a mistake, you know? Because they, you know, they get to, you know, they think of you like a human, like yeah. you are, you know? So, um, yeah, they make it comfortable and it's awesome. And so, Young Sheldon, it's your first role and now you're the lead of Georgie and Mandy. So have you felt any pressure? Was it an easy ad adjustment? Does having it be the same character evolve yeah. to their own show make that a more seamless transition? Right. You? Well, I mean, the thing is, is the way I like to live life is I like to kind of stay out a lot and, and find myself and, and where I find myself most is in Texas at my home place. So I, you know, I try to get back there and, and yeah, it, it would be easy to get caught up in all this. It really would. Yeah. But, but, um, you know, I got, I got my family behind me and they, they keep me humbled as much as they can. So, yeah. And you film this in California in your, but you're living in Texas. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. So this schedule, everybody will tell you in the, in, in the TV business, multicam schedule is the best schedule. Okay. You know, so like Wednesday through Friday, I'm home by at least three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, so it's, and I got a four month old at the house, so yeah. I love my time at home. And, uh, but yeah, so it's two weeks on, one week off. So two weeks, I'm usually in California mm -hmm. filming, and then one week, that one week yeah. off, I try to get back to Texas yeah. to my family. So. But I was going to ask, because you did have a, a baby girl recently, and it's, I'm curious if it's, like, if it helps you play Georgie when you're going through the same thing yeah. as the character. Does I mean, that enrich your, your experience. Yeah, I think, you know, as actors, we try to make, you know, when, if you're in a scene, you want to make it feel like we're just talking like we are right now, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're playing, no matter what kind of character mm -hmm. you're playing, you want it to be smooth and, you know, just flow like a normal conversation. And um, it's the same way with the babies. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if on TV, 
you want to look comfortable when you're holding a baby, you yeah. know, and I've, I've had a lot of baby experiences. I've got my own baby girl now, and I've got uh, two nieces, so yeah. I've, I've been around babies, and I love them. I love babies. Mm -hmm. I feel like I was put on this earth to be a father, <laughs> so, yeah. Has your daughter visited you on set? Or she, she, has. Has. she has. Yeah, she's yeah. come up there, and um, on this multicam, now we get to do, um, like, right before we start filming, um, they introduce all of us, and then at the end, we do a curtain call. So then we go out again and, you know, do all that. But um, that's usually about 8.30 to 10, maybe. And usually my baby girl's asleep. So, But I've tried to get her awake and bring her out there for the curtain call, but she ain't been up yet. But one of these days she will. Yeah. And so your co-star, Emily, she's had a lot of experience with TV yeah. shows. What advice did she maybe give you as you started working on this? And what was it like having her on this journey with you? Yeah, I tell her all the time, and I tell all of them, like, you know, I'm... I'm just I like to sit on the sidelines and watch them and learn and because I know they've done this before and and they know what they're doing they're very professional and they're good at what they do so I tell them all the time I'm I'm a peeping Tom in the corner you know just kind of watching <laughs> and so what conversations did you and Emily have about kind of evolving Georgie and Mandy's dynamic now that they have their own show because were there any changes or shifts to your on-screen chemistry because you obviously have fans already from Young Shelton, but now you kind of have to bring in even more viewers mm -hmm. on this new show. I think even just in real life, the way that, you know, we clicked and we always got along, and like I said, she's so professional and good at what she does, and and um, I think, you know, we've always had a good chemistry and always gotten along, and I think it, it shows on, on the TV, and I think people enjoy it, so. While Georgie and Mandy, their new parents, and mm. they're living in her parents' house, they, they still have time for romance, and I was even going to bring up that title sequence because it's so interesting and like a little steamy. Mm -hmm. So how important was it to sell this love story in addition to kind of the antics that are going on in other parts of the episodes? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think on this new show, um, I don't know, I, I think just just being able to play the characters on you know and and having all the light on them and seeing their storylines of how because we don't really know much about where mandy ends up you know we don't really know and there's you know we film episodes right now where we're in the in the scene they're trying to figure out like um because mandy's still living at her parents house and and you know, she she wanted to be a, a news reporter, and now she's a waitress, and and there's just you know there's there's a bunch of stuff that that's untold, mm -hmm. and I think that you know there's a lot of young or Georgie stuff that that's untold, and we all know that he grows up to be the tire king, so but whether how he gets there, we don't know. So that's what's well, I just have to watch and find out. Well, I was going to ask because obviously fans are a little worried because like, oh, the title gives it away, like they have right. to break up, this or that. But what I've seen from interviews that you've done and that EPs have done is that you're not letting that box you in and you're right. kind of just getting creative with it. So what have those conversations been like of like, there's not a specific destination you're going to, you're kind of going with the flow and mm -hmm. letting the story kind of develop, right. even if it's not like where fans think it is based off mm -hmm. of the title. Yeah, because we all know there's an inevitable breakup in the, in the future and, and um, you know, that as the title says, the first marriage, but whether we know the second marriage or third marriage, because I think the storyline is that Georgie gets married and divorced like two or three times or something like that, And um, but we don't we don't know past that. We don't know if it's with Mandy or with somebody yeah. else, or we have no idea. Mm -hmm. And as an actor in the show, I don't yeah. have no idea. Yeah. I don't even know if the writers do. You know, <laughs> I think we're all just uh, going with the flow and seeing what seeing what people like. Mm -hmm. So, and also there's this conversation about the age gap, and I feel like it's very interesting because from the episodes I've seen, the show does kind of address it without directly addressing it. So, talk to me about how those conversations have happened and the reaction from fans about this, like age gap that doesn't really feel you know you don't really feel it on the show but the show does address it in like very subtle ways yeah yeah, yeah I, I mean you know they've it gives Georgie somewhere to go yeah. you know because like they all they were always thinking of the way that that Mandy was Mandy and and what she kind of got out of it now the way she was treating Georgie but now it's really um, the mother-in-law that yeah. that's kind of down in Georgia and and he's just a just a dumb kid you know and and all this and all that but I think in this new show Georgie finally gets to show that he's not just this dumb kid you know he actually does have a brain on him and um, you know in young children 
and you know having a young very smart brother I'm sure he got overlooked a lot you know and maybe maybe this you know him being the tire king mm -hmm. is his way of showing and proving people mm -hmm. that you know I'm not this dumb kid I actually have some brains on me so yeah. And speaking of your mother-in-law on screen, I spoke to Rachel and she told me that it was really hard to be mean to you. Because she's the face, sweetest lady yeah, I've ever she met. so bad. Oh, she's so, so sweet. What was it like working with her in those scenes? Because she's very different off screen than her character is on the yeah, show. Yeah, and she's completely different. But she plays it so well and she's so, I mean, there's some times where I'm just sitting there watching her and I'm like, she's so good. Mm -hmm. She is so good at what she does. She really is. I mean, everybody knows it, but she got what? Well, she, I think she's almost got. What do you call that? The egot. EGOT yeah, yeah she's egot. Almost there. Almost she's there. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that, that proves it right there. She's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And so Georgie, obviously, he's dealing with the loss of his father, but we have Mandy's father who kind of fills in, especially in the second mm -hmm. episode. We have that sweet moment. So what was it like not really having Georgie's dad on screen yeah. with you, but having kind of like this surrogate? father figure through will right and you know before i answer that it's 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 very it's a very relatable thing mm -hmm. you know it happens all the time where um whether it's a stepfather that has to step in or you know father-in-law or whatever it is and and you know in the in the first in the first episode they had a real sweet scene in the in the tire store where um, Georgia gave Jim a hug and was like, "Well, I didn't, I didn't really hug my dad when I had the chance." And and I think um, I think we're going to get to see a lot of that. How how Jim kind of steps in and tries to be not necessarily his father, just a father figure, and try to help him out through this hard time. And um, there's there's so many good storylines that we've filmed so far that that is just you know it it, it really I. I there, there's one scene that we're filming that we filmed not long ago that that they're working on a on a project car together, and it's just it's just nice to see how how they're getting along and their bond that they're building, and it, it's it's really nice to play. It really is. And so we've kind of touched on it, but how did you approach making your like this show accessible to new fans who might not be coming in? from Young Sheldon, but also what was it like having that support already built an audience that mm -hmm. was going to come in, but now you also have even more people yeah. that are like now checking out the show. Haven't seen Young Sheldon, maybe haven't seen The Big Bang mm -hmm. Theory, but just for you and for Emily. Yeah, and I'll tell this a million times. You can watch Young Sheldon without knowing anything about Big Bang yeah. Theory, and I believe you can watch this new show without watching Young yeah. Sheldon. You know, it's a new start. We're starting a new thing, and, and you know, you get to follow... Georgie and Mandy as they you know go yeah. through all these trials and errors in life and it's it's a very relatable topic and and everybody knows about it and and it's not a secret so so we've already seen several young Sheldon alums come back will that continue can fans expect more of like their fan favorites coming across maybe even from the Big Bang franchise in right. general yeah well, I haven't heard anything about from from um, you know from Big Bang Theory specifically but um, you know, in the first couple of episodes, we have Miss Annie Potts, yes. we have Miss Zoe Perry, yeah. and we have Reagan Revor. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we also filmed a Thanksgiving episode mm -hmm. that brought everybody back as well. Um, so, I think everybody's going to enjoy that. So, I think we have everybody now, um, except for Sheldon. So, he'll have, he'll have to sneak yeah. in eventually. And so, despite being a sitcom, Georgie and Mandy, it's not afraid to hit us kind of where it hurts. The second episode, we see Georgie visiting his dad. How do you balance, you know, the fun, the romance, the drama, the emotion, all in like these really, it feels like short episodes, because I'm watching yeah. it, like, I wish there was like 30 more minutes of right. this. Right. And I, I mean, and I'll tell you what, like, filming a multicam is, it's really like, you know, it's like filming a play. It's it's you know, or or reading a book. You know, you you get done with that week, and then you just flip in the page to the next episode. You know, it's just it picks up where it left off, and that way it's it's easy to get into the character. It's easy to get into the feelings that 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 character is feeling and, and the emotions and everything. And um, yeah, I think I think multicam really helps out on that because single cam there's a lot of a lot of stops and this and you don't film in order yeah. you know but in multicam yeah. it's from the top of the scene to the bottom of the scene or to the top of the episode to the bottom yeah. of the episode 
So it's um, it makes it easier to get into the character and the emotions. And so I was going to ask, you've mentioned it, but what has being in a multicam, having a live audience taught you about maybe being funny or timing that you mm -hmm. didn't know before? Yeah, because it's completely different time. You know, you have to time out, you know, when they're going to laugh and there's not a sheet telling you when yeah. they're going to laugh, you know. Uh, but all, all through rehearsal, um, you know, you kind of, you can guess where they're going to laugh and this and that. But um, hell, sometimes during rehearsal, they'll be laughing in a different spot than they do actually on the night. So you just have to, you know, you can't be in a rush and even the director will come in and be like, let's, you know, chill out, let's calm down. We don't need to get too, you know, up ahead and, and um, you know, just make it, make it look natural and, and just play the laughs. That's what he says, just play the laughs. And so what has this project taught you so far about leading your own show that you will take with you, you know, for the rest of your career? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think that, that, that um, there's a lot com that, that can be taken from this opportunity. And, and I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just a normal person. You know, I still go home. I still put my pants on the same way as anybody <laughs> else, you know. So, um, but no, I, I think that, that just being around this, you know, having this, this opportunity and being around these people and learning everything and and I mean I don't, I don't think that I could be around any better group of people you know they take care of me just like they would their son or anything like that so I'm I'm very thankful to be around everybody I am and I'm I'm writing down everything in my <laughs> notebook everything I can think of so I'm, I'm learning a lot from this one and when I spoke to Rachel she because you know she comes from a Broadway background she's advocating for some kind of musical episode would you be interested in something like that I'd be, yeah, I'd do it I mean hey, she's a whole lot better singer than I am but, uh, I feel like you have like this musician vibe about you so you could really you could sell it well I appreciate it I'll try it out might as well hey they got me to learn to tango I think I can learn to sing too so let's do it and so my last question was there any were there any surprising challenges or highlights so far from filming the show any challenges? Um, oh, I tell you, a challenge is trying not to eat all the food they have on mm -hmm. set. <laughs> That's yeah. a challenge right there in itself. Um, let me think. I mean, I, I just think that that um, you know, when you think of going from a single cam to a multi cam, it can be pretty nerve wracking. And um, but like I was saying earlier, everybody on set is so welcoming and so so easy to work with that they make it they make it. They make it easy. I mean, they even you know just from the director, he just he's very calm and collected even in stressful moments, and and he doesn't you know he doesn't get worked up or nothing like that. He knows that everybody's trying to do the job, and and you know so so far. So I mean, it's been great. I'm enjoying it. I really am. Well, I love the episode so far, and I'm really excited for everyone to see it. I appreciate that. Thank you for.